it's like you wouldn't expect it to be normal. You would expect it because of like the way I think society has made us feel about autism. You would almost expect it to be like different and and some kind of weird thing where they're gonna like hold your hand and they're gonna help you do this because everyone says you're not capable because you have autism or because you can't you can't say these words or you you do this or you do that. But it's not like that. You get this freedom. You get that that experience of summer camp. You get to really kind of like open up and like grow as a person. I mean, I, I have never seen people grow so much as I have in those four days at Camp Encourage. And it's just crazy. It just blows my mind. And then I think, what would happen if we extended that four days to, I mean like, forever. I'm a guy that lives in Lee Summit, Missouri. I spend a lot of my time doing extracurricular activities at school. Sometimes I feel like I don't really go to school to go to school. Like I go to school to do these extra things, which is bad, it's bad, but I enjoy it. So I do band, I do theater, I do the circle. My family drew me into the music world. It's been a part of our family forever. It goes all the way back to my great-grandparents. They were big into bluegrass and we would just jam. Like at our family gatherings, we just jam and play music. I was a stay-at-home mom. And when my youngest boy went into kindergarten, I started working for the local school district. Um, Sabine, and that's why I met Kelly Lee. She was asking for um, volunteers, and I thought I could do a day. I'll just take my bike out there and do a bike ride with the kiddos that wanted to do that. So I did that for a day. Then the next year, I went out and I was um, a counselor. And then the next year, I was a cabin leader for two sessions. That was the year that Sawyer went with me, and I just asked him if he wanted to go. I don't really know why I did it. I wasn't like inspired then. I didn't, I, maybe it was because I didn't know anything about autism. I didn't know anything about what my mom did for a living or, you know, I don't know. I, I just went because I kind of like new experiences and I like the unknown. I don't think he had a lot of um, experience with it, but he had a good heart and I knew he, he doesn't judge people and he just, he just, he just is easy going. He'll make friends with you if you like if you're good to him, and he'll return that. And so I thought that would be. It just was easy. It wasn't a long conversation at all. I was. I don't know if I was scared, but I knew that I was not going to know anything. I wasn't going. I mean, I had no idea what to expect, because I mean, before like in school. We were never taught about autism. We were never taught about any disabilities. It was just kind of like, here's these kids that are gonna act differently than you and we're gonna quarantine them off from you for most of the day and then they're just gonna appear and don't be mean to them. That was it. We didn't know anything, so it was kind of sad. We didn't, I, they didn't really seem like people, I don't think, to us. They just seemed like they were just there doing their own thing. They weren't like a part of the classroom. I would say after I just got into the cabin and all the campers were there and we were all hanging out, it was just, it was great. I mean, it was, 
it's almost like, I mean, autism isn't even a part of the camp. I mean, it, it, it's weird for me to say that, but it's just like you're going to summer camp. You're just going to summer camp to hang out with your friends, and that's really what, what I got. And I was so surprised by that because my whole life, I mean, autism and people with autism had been like this like kind of taboo subject that wasn't I want to say like touchable like you didn't really talk about it you didn't it just wasn't something that existed really and then I went to this camp and I was like this is I mean I feel like everyone should have that experience and realize that wow we're all just people so I was a peer model I've always been a peer model this will be my third year being a peer model um, and basically you're just you're a camper you're a camper there um, you're there to be a friend you know they don't tell you okay you need to act like this and you need to you know try to talk to them like this and la di yada 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 they just say be their friend find common interest go you're a camper and so you just go have a good time you encourage people to be who they are and that's that is one of the hardest things to do, um, I think, as a peer model. I think you have to find out who the campers are. And sometimes, you know, just depending on the kid, they're not willing to share that because their whole lives they've, you know, they've either been picked on or they just, you know, they've been, like, oppressed. And so they just kind of don't, don't want to show who they are anymore out of habit and you gotta kinda pull it out of them a little bit. and It's really great to see that, but it's the hardest job. Um, and probably the most important of the peer model, I think, is to really pull people out of their shell and to make them comfortable. Um, and that's what, that's what I like to do. Doug was my really good friend, and he didn't talk a lot. He liked music. We just kind of bonded. I mean, he was just really easygoing and he was the kind of person I would hang out with. And so we just kind of hung out a lot and I, I got him to talk to me quite a bit. And I just realized that it was really great for him because I feel like the reason he didn't talk so much was because maybe he was afraid what people would say or he was afraid of what he had to say and how people would judge him for it, but once, he, once you showed him that you weren't going to do that, he was, he was ready to talk. I remember a time picking Doug up from school. He didn't want to come to the office, but he had a doctor appointment, so I went to the classroom and went and got him. And his response was, Mom, no, I don't want to go to the doctor. Please, please let me stay in school. And this girl next to him looked up at me and said, Doug talks? And I just, yes, Doug talks. I've, I've told his teachers that for years. He talks nonstop at home, but he's very comfortable at home. Out in public, he's a watcher. I think having pure models in Camp Encourage is what makes it a success because a lot of people need that reassurance from someone to be their buddy and to encourage them to try something. And once people feel comfortable in an environment and they know that they're not being judged, they know people aren't going to tease them, they know the people are genuine and wanting to be with them and they believe in them then they can do anything in the world. Anything's possible. Raise your hand if you want to go fishing tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Every year I've gone, there's been three or four kids that have really kind of got to me because I just really got to know them on a personal level and see them change and grow through the camp, and it was just magical. These kids that I was, I, I was with were my age group so they were in high school so I was thinking the whole time okay how is this gonna happen in high school I mean because let's be honest high school can be a, a vicious place because teenagers are mean to each other they just are that's kinda how we roll it's how kids roll really they can be kinda mean it just was a nice thought to me to think about 
well, what if Doug could go to high school and talk to everyone like that? I mean, think of what could be done. I mean, he might have hidden talents that no one even knows about because he just never shared them. The first time we came home, he was in the car, he was really quiet. He really didn't say a lot. I feared he was probably worn out, but he didn't, he didn't talk a lot. Um, he said he had a good time, but I just wonder, you know, if he was replaying things in his head and maybe different situations or whatever. He didn't really talk a lot about it. He did say he had a good time. And then last year when we came home, that was kind of like the aha moment for me when he just, he just shared how much it really has impacted him. How he would like to see things at his school a little different and have, um, like a social group or something like that set up. And he, he was just running all these things and he talked almost the whole 45 minutes home. And he had all these great ideas and I'm just sitting there and I was just like, just, just overwhelmed with how much he got out of it. The idea of the circle happened at the film premiere of the last film. And my mom just said, you know, Dr. Otten will probably be here. You should probably try to talk with her about it. And we did, I just, I, I mean, cause Dr. Otten I think is like the head of something in our school district. She's, she's high up there. She's pretty in charge. And so it was like good to get her, if she okayed it, then it was gonna happen. I told him I thought it was a great idea. I gave him a couple names uh, of people at his school, some teachers and the special education coordinator there, the autism behavior specialist that I know supports the Lee Summit West, and that was the extent. I, that's really all I did to get it started. And then he did the rest. That's how the idea happened, and then actually getting it to happen was a lot more work than I thought it would be. But it takes a lot of work to make ideas come to life, I learned through that because um, I had to talk with the principal and I had to get two sponsors and then we had to get some supplies. I don't think it was Camp Encourage that donated our supplies but it was a group that Kelly Lee, her like neighborhood has like a neighborhood kind of club and they wanted a way to give back to the community and so they got lots of supplies and tons of games for us, board games and stuff and food. That's how we got our supplies. And I had the sponsors, I had Julie Hume and Kendra Burke, and Mrs. Burke was a, um, a special ed teacher. Frau Hume, or Mrs. Hume, I call her Frau Hume because she's my German teacher. Uh, she teaches German and TOK at the high school, but her daughter Rosie had been at the camp, and so she was really on board with the idea. Um, and she actually came up with the name, The Circle. We were brainstorming ideas, and she just said, The Circle. Hey guys, we're gonna make a here. She may not wear it because she's in the black, but she's such a cute business. Because it was simple and um, very open to interpretation. What would you put on it? No. Oh, did you go to Good place to start with a circle. No. Just get a plate and put a circle on it. You can do it. Silver. I'm just going to stand here. We're going to have the same t-shirt. So I like silver too. I'm just going to have to make a choice. You're doing a good job. I'm very impressed. You got blue like right here. Um, so it, and the simplest way possible, it is taking Camp and Courage and putting it into a school setting. It kind of has become a place for kids to just kind of release some stress and just relax. Um, but the idea of it was for these high school kids um, to be comfortable in their own skin. Uh, especially in high school, I feel like kids struggle with being comfortable with who they are, how they look, or how they talk, or where they're from, or anything like that. And so it's important to me that they feel okay about themselves. We are created. What happened here? Oh, I don't forget to put the you. No, don't, don't, the, no, put no. the U inside the O. Oh, like yeah, that. do that. That'd okay, awesome. good then. That's the actual The benefits of having a group like the circle in a school are just, I think, to model 
inclusion. To, so just to educate people on other kids that are similar or different and just expand, expand the circle, expand the, um, their circle of friends. I think that could be true. We tend to all want to be friends with people just like us. And I think if you have opportunities to be exposed, we're all very comfortable in our little, in our little zones. If you just have opportunities to be exposed to other people that are different from you, I think that's a benefit in and of itself. And so I don't think it has to be really complicated. I think it can be just a time and a place to get together and to get to get, get to know each other. That's all camp is. It's a time and a place that's organized with activities to get together, have fun, be yourself, and and get to know each other. Nine and a half, ten and a half. Okay. I purposely chose people that I knew they would want to be there and they would, for the peers at least, I knew they would want to be there and they would have a full heart when they were there and so it was easy. And then the teachers, the special ed teachers would just kind of push the circle and they would let their kids know about it and then they just came to hang out, which was really great to me and I mean that, that further kind of proves that they want to, they want to be accepted. Everyone wants to be accepted because they came to hang out. We were like, yeah. Eat some pizza, play Clue. It's really kind of sad. I wish I would have had the idea sooner or I wish I would have acted on it sooner because it didn't start uh, coming around until that premiere, which was in the fall. And so nothing happened until second semester. And we really got rolling at the end. We had a bowling party and we finally got like regulars, you know, we had, we had a group. I mean, we really, we were a group that knew each other. And so next year, that's the goal. When Kelly and I started Camp Encourage many years ago, it was an over overwhelming thought. I mean, we had a vision, we had a mission, but it was an overwhelming thought. I remember many times we were exhausted because there was so much work to do, but as you get more and more people involved and excited, that energy just starts multiplying and then pretty soon it just takes on a life of its own and, and people get on board. I think people want to do the right thing. They want to do good things. They just can't always find a way and a place and support to do them. I've had lots of professionals say that it changed their life and changed their view of their career. And I've also had a lot of young peer models or early career or college students say that they, that camp encourages why they then chose the profession of special education or occupational therapy or, or something because it ignited a passion for them that they wanted to spend their lives helping these individuals grow and learn. Part of what I really like about Camp Encourage is the volunteers that go there are so genuine and seem to care and I don't know many backgrounds um, but they're there year after year after year helping and that really says something. So then when they go out in the public and they see folks with differences, whatever they might be, I know that those people are much more accepting and by talking with their friends and their families, hopefully eventually we can end the stigma of being different in any way. Hopefully it will just spread. I think that people that have those types of experiences with people that are different from them, they just spread the word and they spread the attitude and they spread acceptance of others. And I see it happening in a very small way in our community, but I see those ripple effects go out and it, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger it becomes contagious. Well, I mean, really the whole idea is a ripple effect. Like just the fact, like the circle is a ripple effect. But I wouldn't have done it if I didn't go to Camp Encourage.